Transforming layers and design elements is one of the most common used features in Adobe Photoshop. So in this video, we'll be learning how to transform our images, layers, and even all tips and tricks about transformation essentials. So even if you are an intermediate user, probably you will be finding something new in that video. So here in that file, we have those three images. And let's say we need to be rescaling any of them. We can be selecting maybe that image while having our move tool selected. And also I have auto select feature enabled. I'm gonna be selecting only that layer in here, which is layer two. Then we can start transforming that image by going to edit. And here you can find all transform controls. And in this video, we're gonna be covering free transform along with other transform options. So let's choose free transform first, or you can use shortcut command or control T. And instantly you will be finding that bounding box around your image, where we can start scaling that image either up or down by hovering over any of these corner points, maybe that one, and we can start dragging outside for scaling that image up or dragging in to scale it down. And here in our control bar or option bar, you can see that we have scaled our image up all the way from 100% to 105 while maintaining proportions for width and height. So we didn't have any distortion within our image. However, if we would like to distort our image, we can be hovering again to that corner point for instance. Then we can be holding shift key and starting to scale our image. Now we can be distorting that one maybe something like that. Here you can see that we have reduced our width to 32% with only 5% reduction in height. And of course our image doesn't look amazing that way so we can be undoing that pressing command or control Z. However, in some cases we might need to be distorting our images, maybe just a bit. So for instance, we can be hovering on that side and we can start dragging down side by holding shift key once again to distort our image and dragging that one a bit, maybe in that case to align that image with those two other images. And by the way guys, if you're using an older version of Adobe Photoshop, you will be doing the opposite to maintain proportions for your scaling. And what I mean by that is that you need to be holding shift key to maintain proportions while you're scaling your images. So that was the default thing is that you hold shift and start transforming your images. However, now Adobe changed that and you need to be just scaling your images up and down to maintain proportions without holding any shift key because in most of the cases you will be scaling your images in the same aspect ratio and if you would like to distort your image anytime you can be holding shift key to start freely distorting that one. Now let's say we are happy with that scaling we can be applying that by hitting return or pressing that comet or tick key to have your transformation applied. Now let's go ahead and transform that second image by clicking on that image. We have that one selected and pressing command or control T. And let's maybe transform that one from our control bar in here by clicking on width, making that one 90% and instantly height will be changed also to 90%. If you would like to unlink these two values in here, you can be clicking that chain in here to also distort your image. And now we can be setting width again to 85% while maintaining the same height. And also from here, we can be moving our elements within our artboard by entering our values. So here I have that document in pixels. So instead of 95 to pixels, we can be setting that one maybe to 1000 to slightly nudge that one maybe 50 pixels to right and that actually could be very helpful if you would like to design in a very precise way in Photoshop and instead of moving your elements around like that you can be inserting an exact value either in X or Y or you can be sliding them from here as well and also guys remember that you can be always doing simple mathematics in here so we can be adding maybe another 9 pixels to that value by adding maybe 9 pixels or 8.5. Now we have 1000 pixels once again. And also from here we can be rotating our image by entering a specific value for that angle. Or we can be hovering 
over any of these corners to start rotating our image. So I'm gonna be clicking and dragging that one to right side. And also, as you can see guys, we are seeing which angle we are at. And if we would like to go for precise sharp angles, we can be pressing shift while rotating our image. So we'll be getting a sharp 15 angle and it will keep adding all the way to 30, 45, and so on and so forth. And if I start releasing that shift key, I can freely rotate that one once again. So probably I will leave it in here and I can be hitting return. <laughs> now let's say we don't like that and we need to get that one back to zero degree angle. We can be pressing command or control T once again. However, in that case, we have a very tiny problem as Photoshop doesn't really remember our original images angle as we have our angle already set to zero and that's not zero for us, that's 37 degrees. So if you would like to rotate your images in a non-destructive way, which means that we want to preserve our original images angle, we can be transforming that image or that layer into a smart object. So instead of applying that transformation, we can be canceling that from here or simply hitting escape on keyboard and pressing command or control Z to undo rotating our image. And now simply we're gonna be right clicking that layer in here and looking for convert to smart object. You will be seeing that icon in here on your layer and we're gonna be covering smart objects in detail later. However, just for now, if you would like to keep your original angle, you can be converting your layer into a smart object and transforming our image, hitting command or control T and rotating our image again, hitting return. Now, if we press command or control T once again, we will have our bounding box around our image. We will find that Photoshop actually remembers that angle so we can be resetting that one to zero easily like that. And let's maybe select that third image in here However, we can't really access most of Photoshop's features unless we execute that. So I'm gonna be executing that transformation first and selecting that image and pressing Command or Control T. And now we can be discovering another transformations options. So here, for instance, we can be switching to warp mode by clicking that button, which will be giving us that transformation grid where we can be easily distorting our image by controlling each and every point of these alone so we can start dragging that side and maybe that one as well and also we can be adjusting those handles for each and every point maybe to have a curve like that and same as well in here maybe you can be driving that handle in as well and pulling that one out and maybe that one in to probably get that one looking like that or we can be selecting from those presets in here so maybe you can be inflating that one just like that or maybe switching to fish eye where it's going to be giving us the illusion of fish eye lens and we can be increasing the strength of that effect from here by increasing that value either up just like that. Or we can be applying a horizontal distortion, maybe 30%. However, let me get back to free transform mode by clicking that button in here. And let's reduce its size a bit while holding Alt or Option key and scaling that one to scale that one to center and instead of scaling like that. So pressing Alt or Option key will scale that one to center. And hitting return, we can be selecting that image, pressing command or control T once again. And let's say we need to be distorting that image once again. So I'm gonna be holding command or control T while scaling that point. So I'm only controlling that point in here, or maybe let's get it to here. And also we can be moving that one all the way like that. However, I'm not going to be applying that, so I'm going to be pressing escape. And let's re-transform again. And instead of controlling that point, I'm going to be controlling one of these side points. So in that case, we are moving that left side up or down. 
and also in that case we are able to distort our image so if we would like to maintain proportions we need to be holding shift key as well now let's cancel that and discover another trick pressing escape and retransforming our image once again now we can be pressing command or control alt or option shift key basically all modifiers and we can start transforming our image in perspective that time so as you can see it's going like that or maybe in a horizontal way something like that <laughs> and in that case you can see the difference between transforming in perspective like that and applying warp transformation with some distortion and also you can be switching between different transformations options by right clicking your image while you are in transform mode you can be switching to free transform once again if you are happy with that perspective or you can be moving to skew distort or warp once again and here we have some rotations options as well however what's really useful in here is flipping your image either in horizontal or vertical way so we can be flipping that one in a vertical way maybe where it will be flipped upside down or we can be undoing that pressing command or control z and flipping that image in a horizontal way and also here's one way to flip your images so let's hide these images in here and selecting that layer and let's maybe transform that one in a different way by activating that option in here show transform controls and let's maybe flip that image we can be dragging any of these sides to the other direction of course while holding shift key to get out of that distortion that you saw however in that case you are probably distorting your images unless you are keeping your eyes on width so here we have 3% distortion in width if you would like to be precise probably you will be resetting that one However, I really recommend that you do that one by right clicking and selecting flip horizontal or vertical from here or you can be doing that as well from edit and you can be accessing also all these options from here. So let's get our layers back once again. I'm moving that one to center. And probably if you like to keep scaling your images and transforming them in an easy way, you can keep that one on which is going to be turning Photoshop a bit into Illustrator application <laughs> which might be also speeding your workflow a bit as basically we are not in transform mode while having that option on show transform controls however we can be easily scaling our images so let's maybe select that image as well holding shift key while clicking on that one and also selecting our third image so even without pressing command or control T we can be scaling those images easily like that so guys hope you enjoyed that one and you'll be finding that file in your resources let me show you that one here in that folder transformation and aligning and you will be finding that bsd file align and transform and it's highly recommended that you practice that one as well on your pc so you can really digest and master these skills